So Nathan cleverly makes his first uh, his, his UK UK his US debut. What am I talking about his US debut in Los Angeles against uh, Sean Hawke, defending the WBO light heavyweight championship of the world and stopping Sean Hawke in the eighth round. So Nathan wins the fight in the eighth round. What did we learn from this fight? Well, we know that cleverly punches in bunches. Uh, we know that he likes to get involved in a war and a tear up, um, and he used to be the guy who was at university and was boxing and juggling the two at the same time, and now he's taking this sport on full time on a full time basis as world champion. Now, through a lot of flashy combinations against a guy who was basically a sitting duck. Um, and yes, Sean Hook does throw punch, had through some power in his punches, um, and he did catch cleverly with a few punches. And there were moments in the fight I was thinking, I mean, this guy is a bit better than a club fighter, and cleverly is looking ordinary. I mean, yes, he threw fast punches, but did he do anything different to what we would normally know of Nathan Cleverly? Not really. Um, I, I think he'd fight that way against Nathan, uh, against Bernard Hopkins. I think he'd fight the same way against Shumanoff. I think he'd fight that same way against Travois Cloud. I think he'd fight that same way against Chad Dawson. I think that's just the way Cleverly is. I don't buy into the fact that Cleverly's going to get better. I, I really don't. I'm not convinced. I think this is just the way Cleverly is. Um, how far he can go with that style remains to be seen. Can you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with opponents that hit harder than you? and are stronger than you don't know i mean he hit he knocked uh sean hawk down three four occasions but uh, you know um it was the body shots that hurt it, sean hawk but that was after taking loads and loads and loads of punches you know i don't people are talking yeah um bernard hopkins is uh i don't know he's old Let's take him now. Listen, Bernard Hopkins is a legend. Let me put it this way. The guy's a legend. He's fought all sorts of styles and opponents. Um, yes, he fought Joe Kazaki a few years ago, and it was a close fight. Some people thought Hopkins won it. Some people thought Joe Kazaki won it. Fact is, Joe Kazaki won the fight. Um, but I still think Joe Kazaki is a better fighter than, um, than Nathan Cleverly, simply because Kazaki can change his style. Um, I don't think that Nathan's that adaptable. Yes, we saw in the fight uh, Nathan started boxing, boxing from long range and using his jab. Why didn't he do it from the beginning of the fight? Why didn't Why didn't he just stay from long range and try and pepper him that way? Why did he fight in close? You know, um, can he afford to do those things against guys like Travois Cloud or Shumanoff? You know, he's taking these shots he doesn't need to take. Um, and can he fight backing up? I'm not totally convinced of Nathan Cleverly. Just say, just putting that out there, I'm not really convinced about him. His combinations at times look good. He kind of reminds me when he puts his combination together, like Oscar De La Hoya did. Um, different was Oscar De La Hoya had a wicked left hook, uh, not drop guys with that left hook. Nathan Cleverly is not a one punch knockout artist, and um, I think that's going to really be a problem when he fights to really really top names in the division and of course you might even trying to stand toe to toe with guys yeah he might give you an exciting fight but eventually he's going to run into a guy that when he's doing that stuff he's going to tag him counter punch him and probably drop him it's only a matter of time um so that defense is far too leaky for me and if guys like sean hawker catching him you've got to wonder what a guy like Shumanoff, who does hit very hard, or Traverse Cloud, or even a, a, a Hopkins. He might not be fast, Hopkins, but he's got a better inside game than Nathan Cleverly. Um, and he's an uh, excellent counter puncher, and he'll mess Cleverly about. Um, so I don't think the Cleverly fight with Hopkins is a foregone conclusion. If you're thinking about Hopkins' age, Hopkins was never the fastest man on the planet. But he's a wily old fox. And um, if he was given Pascal issues, 
and he gave Chad Dawson the first fight, inter uh, interesting fight with Chad Dawson, I mean, if, sorry, not Chad Dawson, against Pascal. You know, I think that um, Hopkins is going to give him a fight. I really do believe that. Because um, Cleverly is going to want to have a tear up. Hopkins will talk bad about him before the fight, as you know, it'll happen, a lot of trash talk. And then Cleverly's pride will get into it. And I can see that Hopkins will use that skill and try and counter punch. And there's lots of opportunities to counter punch for Nathan Cleverly. So. I guess he'll say it's onward and upwards for Nathan Cleverly, but uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe he should make a title defense against Coyote. Or maybe a uh, fight against Antonio Tava. Although Tava's got his uh, ban from boxing at the moment. That must be nice to see what he'd do against someone like Tava. That'd be, that would be a nice opponent. Uh, Coyote would be good. I suppose the sparring session was very good, reportedly, when he was at the wildcard gym. I don't know. But um, clearly he's got to fight somebody, you know, that's world ranked and decent now. Um, no more excuses. So it's rumoured that Hopkins is coming back on March the 9th. Could that be against Nathan Cleverly? Who knows? All right. This is the Boxing Hangout. I'm out.